Bhagavata Sevaya Bhagavati Uttama Shloke Bhaktir Bhavati Naishtaki So we're continuing to discuss the pastimes of Lord Nishringadev here. Right. So Bhakti Purushottam Swami took us up to the point where Lord Nishringadev appeared and killed Haranyakashipu and he introduced some of the different devas speaking and but he didn't get into Prahlad's prayers. So I thought maybe begin from that point. Discussing Prahlad Maharaj's prayers to Lord Nishring. Hmm? Because uh, we know Lord Nishringadev was very angry. His anger had been greatly aroused and the different demigods had not been successful in pacifying Lord Nishringadev. And even Lakshmi, his own consort, was unable to pacify him. So then the, the, demi, the devas decided maybe maybe Prahlad can do something. So they brought forward Prahlad Maharaj before Lord Nishringadev and Prahlad offered his full obeisances to Lord Nishringadev. And Lord Nishringadev, seeing Prahlad there, put his hand on the head of Prahlad Maharaj. And with the touch of Lord Nishringadev's hand on the head of Prahlad Maharaj, Srimad Bhagavatam describes, uh, Prahlad was completely freed of all material contamination and desire as if it had been thoroughly cleansed. Therefore, he at once became transcendentally situated and all the symptoms of ecstasy became manifest in his body. His heart filled with love and his eyes with tears Thus he was able to completely capture the lotus feet of the Lord within the core of his heart. So, Srila Prabhupada's purport. As stated in Bhagavad Gita, Mamchayovaya Bicharena Bhakti Yogena Sevate Sagunam Samati Jaitam Brahma Bhuyaya Kaupati. One who engages in full devotional service, who does not fall down in any circumstance, at once transcends the modes of material nature, comes to the level of Brahman. Elsewhere in Bhagavad Gita, the Lord says, Mamhi parta vayapashridya ye pishu papayonaya striyo vaishastata sudras te piyanti paramgatim. O son of Prita, those who take shelter of me, though they be of lower birth, women, vaishyas, as well as sudras, workers, can approach the supreme destination. On the strength of these verses from Bhagavad Gita, it is evident that although Prahlad Maharaj was born in a demonic family, and although virtually demonic blood flowed within his body, he was cleansed of all material bodily contamination because of his exalted position as a devotee. In other words, such impediments on the spiritual path could not stop him from progressing, for he was directly in touch with the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Those who are physically and mentally contaminated by atheism cannot be situated on the transcendental platform. But as soon as one is freed from material contamination, he 
is immediately fit to be situated in devotional service. Omagyana Timaranda Sayakyananjana Shalakaya Chaksurun Militanyena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Vanchakaupa Tarubyas Jaya Kripa Sindhu Bhayevacha Patita Nam Pavane Bhyo Vaishnavibhyo Namo Namaha Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Hadvaita Gadadhar Shri Vasadigor Bhaktavinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare So in this verse we are hearing how Prahlad Maharaj got the mercy of Lord Nisringadev. Of course, Prahlad Maharaj certainly was worthy of the mercy of Lord Nisringadev because he had undergone so many uh, trials and tribulations. He being he went, underwent tests which we cannot even conceive of. But Prahlad Maharaj never thought anything very special about himself. Rather, because he was in Krishna consciousness, because he was fully in, absorbed in thought of the Lord, it was not a great test for him. The, the tests and the obstacles of material world are often there in the mind. The real, the real obstacle, the real challenge is to remember Krishna, to fix the Lord in our mind. And if the Lord is there within the mind, then there's no problem. So we can understand from these uh, experiences which Prahlad Maharaj underwent at the hands of his demoniac father, we can understand how expert he must have been in remembering the Lord. To be able to remember the Lord in all of these difficult situations, not a very small task. But Prahlad Maharaj, although small, because we understand he's a child still, a few years, five years old or something, but he was, somehow he was able to always remember the Lord. And now the opportunity has come to him that he's meant to offer prayers to Lord Nishringadev. It's like another challenge for him. First of all, the father was testing him, trying to kill him in so many different ways. And now the demigods are testing him. Let us see, let us see what's, what's in your mind. What, 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 what are you thinking? The different demigods came and their prayers are, you know, they're just one verse. Each demigod, there's one sloka. But Prahlad Maharaj comes forward and we see, you know, the whole practical, a big chapter. Many, many, beginning from text 8 up to text 50, it's Prahlad Maharaj offering prayers, one after another, glorifications of Lord. Glorifying the Supreme Lord and describing also the situation of the materialists. And Prahlad also reveals his own compassionate mood, his compassionate nature, how he, pray, how he feels sorry for all those souls. He said, I'm happy, but I want to see them happy too. I don't want them to be happy in their material life. I want them to come to Krishna consciousness. So Prahlad Maharaj has that mood. 
So the, de the devas, by bringing Prahlad forward, they want Prahlad to reveal what is in his mind, what is in his heart, to reveal his heart. And with the help of Lord Nishringadev, Prahlad Maharaj is able to speak. Because with the touch of the Lord's lotus hand on his head, Prahlad Maharaj is inspired to offer his prayers. Uh, Prahlad Maharaj also, in one of the prayers, he mentions how Lord Nishringadev had shown him special mercy. He said, you put your hand on my head. You never put your hand on the head of anybody else. You didn't put your hand on the head of even Mother Lakshmi. But for some reason, I don't know why Prahlad said, I, you, you've given me that mercy. So Prahlad Maharaj is appreciating the causeless mercy of Lord Nishringadev. The touch of the Lord's lotus hand on his head energizes the, 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 the body of Prahlad Maharaj and purifies his mind or his consciousness of any of the contamination which, which may be there due to his birth. Because certainly Prahlad had a, not a very pleasant birth born in the family of such a powerful demon that his father, king of the demons, who had performed also great austerities to, got, to get the blessings of Brahma and who defeated the demigods. And then he comes to even going to, will it, ready, to, trying to kill his own son Prahlad. So Haranyakashipu, you know, coming in that kind of family, it's not very noble birth, really. But, you know, Haranyakashipu, his parents are Diti and Kashyapa, right? You know, Diti and Kashyapa, you know, Kashyapa is a great personality, but just things were not right from the beginning. The time of conception was improper. And so the result was you get personalities like Haranyaksha and Haranyakashipu. And then we heard from Bhakti Purushottam Maharaj about the time of conception of Prahlad how Haranyakashipu was doing his tapasya, his meditation, when Angira and Narada came in the form of birds chanting Narayan, 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 right? They were chanting the name of the Lord. And so that was in the mind, that disturbed the meditation of Haranyakashipu. So sometimes people say, Haranyakashipu also did Garbhadan Samskar. He was produced, he produced Prahlad, and the result was you got a great devotee like Prahlad. But that's not the real reason why Prahlad was such a great devotee. But the real reason was, it's just, as described by uh, Prahlad himself in his prayers, text number uh, 29, I think it is, in this chapter, Prahlad Maharaj rem remembers his guru, right? Oh, maybe. It must be 28. Well, let me see. Yes, 28. Prahlad prays, text 28. My dear Lord, O Supreme Personality of Godhead, because of my association with material desires, one after another, I was gradually falling into a blind well full of snakes, following 
the general populace. But your servant, Narada Muni, kindly accepted me as his disciple and instructed me how to achieve this transcendental position. Therefore, my first duty is to serve him. How could I leave his service? Of course, this verse was also included by Srila Prabhupada in his uh, arrival prayer. Right. When Prabhupada was coming on Jaladutta, he wrote those poems. So in one of the songs, one of the the poems which he has written, he included also this verse. So Narada, uh, Narada Muni gave mercy also to Prahlad Maharaj. And Prahlad Maharaj is appreciating that. He says, therefore, my first duty is to serve him. How could I leave his service? Our first duty is service to the spiritual master. Just like every day we do Mongol Arti, some people criticize us that, oh, Hare Krishnas, they only worship the Guru in the morning. No, we begin the worship by worshiping the Guru, by singing Guru Vastikam. But then we also worship Lord Krishna. It's not that we only worship the Guru, but certainly we must worship the Guru before we can go to worship Krishna. That's proper, right? So Narada Muni, uh, uh, he accepted Prahlad as his disciple and in instructed him how to get the transcendental position. Prahlad Maharaj is appreciating that he saved me. He said, I was f falling into a, 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 a well, a blind well full of snakes. I said, just like everybody else in the material world, everyone, we say the blind follows the blind, right? What do people do in the material world? Everybody, they go drinking, they take drugs, they eat meat, they have illicit sex, they do all kinds of stupid things. People do these things without even thinking about it. They think, no, everybody does it. The blind follow the blind. And Prahlad Maharaj said, I was also going to be like that. I was also following them. But somehow this Narada Muni saved me. Right? This is how we, we also pray to the spiritual master. And Prabhupada also said like that about his spiritual master. Even though Srila Prabhupada was born in a Vaishnava family, his whole life without sin, but he said, when, when he was asked about his spiritual master, he said, he was no ordinary person. He saved me. So like that, we also think of our spiritual master like that, that he saved us from the hellish life, from being in the, this material world. Etern can, we would... Eternally, we're doomed to this material world and to the life of just serving the senses. But somehow, the spiritual master gave us some mercy. He gave us a chance to become his disciple and he gave us the transcendental knowledge. So very important that we should never think we can ever repay that debt to the spiritual master. Right? There's no wealth in the three worlds which can ever repay that debt to the spiritual master that they have given us so much. That they've given us that the most valuable thing. So Prahlad Maharaj said, how could I leave his service. We feel very sorry sometimes. We see people come to Krishna consciousness and take up Krishna consciousness and they appear to be so qualified. They have skills, they, have, they can do wonderful things, talented, but somehow or other, somehow they go away, they give up Krishna consciousness. 
it's so lamentable to bring someone to Krishna consciousness. We, Prabhupada said, you have to shed gallons of blood to bring a soul to Krishna consciousness. And the, not that we bring them to Krishna consciousness, then you have to train them. And it takes so much energy, so much time, bringing them up, training them. And then again, if they go away, they go back into the material life. It's so painful, it's so lamentable. Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati Prabhupada had the experience. He gave one of his disciples sannyas. And then he saw the man's wife came and took him away. Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati Prabhupada lamented, I could not save him. So sometimes we, we, we don't want to be in that position to give so much trouble to the spiritual master that he accepts us, he gives us the opportunity for Krishna consciousness and if we don't keep up our Krishna consciousness, if we simply go away, then it's a great shame, a great loss. So Prahlad Maharaj said, he doesn't want to be like that. He said, he, does, he wants to remember his spiritual teacher. He wants to show his appreciation to him. So, how does how how can he serve? What what service will Prahlad Maharaj do for his spiritual master? So this is also described with Prahlad's prayers, right? Prahlad Maharaj goes on to describe what he what is his uh, thinking about how he's going to be engaged in Narada Muni's service. He talks about, first of all, he said, uh, here, text number 40, he said, Oh my Lord, O oh infallible one, my position is like that of a person who has many wives, all trying to attract him in their own way. For example, the tongue is attracted to palatable dishes the genital to sex with an attractive woman, and the sense of touch to contact with soft things. The belly, although filled, still wants to eat more, and the ear, not attempting to hear about you, is generally attracted to cinema songs. The sense of smell is attracted to yet another sight, the restless eyes are attracted to scenes of sense gratification, and the active senses are attracted elsewhere. In this way, I am certainly embarrassed. Prahlad Maharaj is saying he's embarrassed. How much more we must feel embarrassed if Prahlad Maharaj said he's embarrassed. But he, he's the one who could remember Krishna all the time. And we can hardly, hardly ever think of remembering Krishna. But Prahlad Maharaj said, he's embarrassed. The senses, all these different senses pulling us, trying to enjoy, just like a man with many wives. So difficult. So then Prahlad Maharaj goes on, he said, my dear Lord, you're always transcendentally situated on the other side of the river of death. But because of the attraction, because, or because of the reaction of our own activities, we are suffering on this side. Indeed, we have fallen into this river and are repeatedly suffering the pain of birth and death, eating horrible things, now kindly look upon us, not only upon me, but also upon all others who are suffering. And by your causeless mercy and compassion, deliver us and maintain us. 
So Prahlad Maharaj is praying to Lord Nishringadev that he wants Lord Nishringadev to deliver these fallen souls. He knows that it needs the mercy of the Lord. Just like you want to distribute Krishna consciousness, we can't do anything on our own. You have to have Krishna Shakti, right? Propagating the holy name. It's the energy of Krishna. It's not that we can do anything on our own. No, but if we're empowered with the Krishna Shakti, Krishna Tatasta Shakti, Veda Vega Prakash, huh? right? The, 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 holy, the, the one who is successful in propagating the holy name is understood he has that Krishna Shakti. So here also Lord Nishringadev is, or Prahlad Maharaj is praying to Lord Nishringadev that these fallen souls, they're, they're suffering so much, birth and death, and then eating horrible things. Oh, we certainly know all about the horrible things people eat these days. You know, of course, here in Mayapur Dam, not so bad, but yeah, you, you just have to go outside, you know, you can see all the horrible things. I don't know, you get the chance to travel the world a little bit, and it's amazing, different countries in the world, some of the things, some of the things which they eat, which they call delicacies, you know. Just, un I won't even attempt to describe them in words, you know, but they're just, just horrible, just terrible things. All different species of life. There's no, con no distinction. They will eat. So, because of this, con this condition of life, People are certainly suffering so much. So Prahlad Maharaj prays to Lord Nishringadev that you, if you can be kind upon us, deliver. He says, not only me, but the others, all of these other people. Mm. Prahlad Maharaj shows his, his compassion also. He's not, he's not concerned about himself. Because he, he goes on in the next verse talking the same way, just like he said here in this verse, he said, no, no, not just me, but the others. And Prahlad Maharaj says, uh, I know it's not difficult for you. You manage the affairs of the universe. Text 40, 41, 42, yeah. What is the difficulty? You manage the affairs of the universe in delivering the fallen souls engaged in your devotional service. You are the friend of all suffering humanity. And for great personalities, it is necessary to show mercy to the foolish. Therefore, I think that you should show your causeless mercy to persons like us who engage in your service. So certainly the Lord shows mercy to those who engage in his service. The Lord is pleased by devotional service. He can only be understood by devotion. This point comes out again and again in Prahlad Maharaj's prayers. Prahlad Maharaj is really the Raja Bhakta Prahlad Maharaj, right? Sometimes people say Bhakta Prahlad, Bhakta, but, but in Chaitanya Charitamrita, Prabhupada writes, Bhakta means new devotee. Prahlad is not new devotee. So to call him Bhakta Prahlad, it's not correct. So you can, I found that in the Chaitanya Charitamrita because we had some discussion about that. Somebody was pointing out, why are you saying Bhakta Prahlad? And somebody said, no, it's okay. It's Bhakta, you know. But in Chaitanya Charitamrita, Prabhupada mentions, Bhakta means neophyte. So Prahlad is not neophyte. He's Uttama Adhikari. He's Mahabhagavat. He's Mahajan. So how could he be neophyte? So we, but we could say Raja Bhakta Prahlad. Or 
simply Prahlad Maharaj. Right? So Prahlad Maharaj he is eager to do service for Lord Nishringadev. And he wants Lord Nishringadev to be compassionate and kind on the conditioned souls who have fallen into this material world, the suffering humanity. It's a bit like Vasudev Datta, who prayed for the deliverance of all the fallen souls. Of course, Vasudev Datta was saying, I will stay here, let them all go back to Godhead. Prahlad Maharaj is, he's not so much, he's not asking for himself, but for the others, for them. They need it. Prahlad Maharaj goes on in the next verse. He said, I can sit and chant anywhere, right? Prahlad Maharaj said, uh, Text 43, the nice, very nice verse. I am not afraid of material existence, for wherever I stay, I am fully absorbed in thoughts of your glories and activities. My concern is only for the fools and rascals who are making elaborate plans for material happiness maintaining their families, societies, and countries. I am simply concerned with love for them. So Prahlad Maharaj describes more about the nature of these materialistic people, that they make elaborate plans to maintain their happiness and to maintain their families and societies and countries. We can see how these plants are so easily disrupted. Just like, you know, one little virus comes along and the whole thing is all knocked apart. All their plans, all their big efforts, all their organization and all their railways and airports, all useless, all closed down, shut down. All Hmm? It is so small, you cannot even see it. Yeah, right, right. So small, you cannot even see it. You know? Yeah. But so powerful, huh? <laughs> Our, we're, we're thinking we're powerful. We don't know who has the real power. And so, Prahlad Maharaj understands the real power is Lord Nishringadev. I just saw they put out, they put out some message, some, the gov, uh, uh, I think one country, they were ending their lockdown and they said, no religious activities for the time being. It should have been the other way around. They should have had only religious activities allowed for the time being. They got the whole thing wrong, you know, the whole thing is so wrong. They say, no religious activity, no religious gatherings for the time being. <laughs> you know, go on with all your foolish sense gratification and your factories and your industries, making the planet hell, but don't do any religion. That will be bad. They don't know what is good for the world. They have no idea. But these are the, the leaders, the people guiding us and leading us. They're arranging like that. So, is it any wonder we get these kind of problems like epidemics? It's because everything is so, so wrong. So many things are wrong. So, Prahlad Maharaj, he's concerned for all, all of these fools and rascals. He said, but for himself, I have no problem. Wherever I go, I can simply absorb myself in your glories and activities. Right? Devotees have no problem wherever they go. Simply, they just need Wi-Fi. 
<laughs> and then they go on Zoom and they have a, in, lectures all over the world, you know. So many devotees are Zooming everywhere with their Bhagavat Katas. It's going on all over the planet, you know. They're making good use of all those satellites up there, you see. All those satellites up there have created a lot of trouble, actually, to the, to the, the, the ether, you could say. But devotee, we use everything for Krishna's service. Okay, so using it for Krishna, so it's okay. So we just need to make use of all of these facilities for the service of Krishna. We can chant and, he, and, and if there's no Wi-Fi, okay, not a problem. We can sit and we can chant, right? In Srimad Bhagavatam, Lord Kapila's teaching are there, describing about the child in the womb, how the child in the womb can remember Krishna. He's very Krishna conscious and he prays to Krishna. So the question is raised, is it possible to be Krishna conscious in a, an environment like the womb where there's no paraphernalia. You don't have any of the 16 items which you would worship Shalagram with. You know, you don't even have a flower to offer or anything. You know, is it possible to be Krishna conscious without all the paraphernalia? And they say, yes, definitely. Why not? Because the Lord can be worshipped in the mind. So, devotee can also, if they're expert enough, they can also worship the Lord in the mind. They may not have any actual deity, they don't have, have any vigraha form, they may not have even pictures or paintings, they don't have any, but within the mind, the Lord can be worshipped. The brahmana was doing his puja in the mind. And he was cooking the sweet rice in the mind. But he burned his finger nonetheless. <laughs> and so that was, that was all for the pleasure of the Lord. And that Brahmana, he went back to Godhead. So Prahlad Maharaj, he also wants to see all of these fools and rascals. He wants them also to be delivered. Prahlad Maharaj said, I am simply concerned with love for them. So Prahlad Maharaj has that feeling of love. He's really concerned for them. It's unusual. D d a devotee, they actually, they're the real well-wisher of others. People criticize sometimes devotees that why are you disturbing us? You're making so much noise. I remember as a new devotee, we would go down this Oxford Street in London. You know that street, Jananiva? Oxford Street? We, we would do Harinam Sankirtan down Oxford Street. So this one man would come out every day almost and complain, stop it, stop it, stop making all this noise. You're disturbing my people. You're disturbing my office. We can't work every day when you come by with all this noise. He couldn't understand. We're chanting the holy names of Krishna. We're giving the holy name to people. It's for their benefit. He thought we were just singing and dancing for some recreation. He could not understand our higher purpose, that this is a benediction. It's giving the holy name to people. It's blessing them. But the man's complaining, do something useful. Go and find a job. <laughs> they have no idea. When you try to do work for the benefit of others, they just criticize you. That this is not useful. They do not understand what is actually useful. They think it's useful. You work in a, you find a job, work in a meat restaurant, or work in a bar or something. <laughs> is it useful? Yeah, it's hell. People have no idea what is actually good for the world. So when we try to do 
welfare activities, we try to give the holy name to people, very rarely is it appreciated. Prahlad Maharaj, however, he, he's very much concerned for the welfare of others and he's praying to Lord Nisringadev that if you will allow, if somehow, if you can arrange to deliver these fallen souls, then that will be so wonderful. Huh? This, this next one verse also very nice. Hmm? Prahlad Maharaj is describing. He said, I see that there are many saintly persons, but they are only interested in their own deliverance, not caring for the big cities and towns. They go to the Himalayas or to the forest to meditate with vows of silence, monavrat. They are not interested in delivering others. As for me, however, I do not wish to be liberated alone, leaving aside all these poor fools and rascals. I know that without Krishna consciousness, without taking shelter of your lotus feet, one cannot be happy. Therefore, I wish to bring them back to shelter at your lotus feet. So Prahlad Maharaj is such a preacher. He's such a strong desire to deliver the fallen souls. But he, Prahlad Maharaj also had seen not everybody's like that. Some people just concerned for their own salvation, for their own deliverance. Some people even doing monavrat, silence, you know, just being silent. We are, we, devotee Prabhupada said, the sound of silence means chanting Hare Krishna. That's the real sound of silence. And so just simply keeping quiet. The tongue may be silent, but the mind is not silent. And within the mind, there are so many thoughts and desires. I, I've seen people, these temp, sometimes they're doing monavrat, they have their board with them. They write everything on the board. I was with Mahavishnu Swami, we were traveling, and we stopped, there was a temple on the hillside. We went over to the temple to check, have a look in the temple. There was this one Baba there. He just put his hand in front of his mouth, waved his hand, said, no, not indicating, he wasn't speaking. We understood, oh, he's doing one of... Anyway, we preached to him. <laughs> and we showed him the books, and we sold him books. He bought books. He, we put, showed him Bhagavad Gita. He said, how much? <laughs> Paid us? <laughs> very, very nice. Uh, memorable <laughs> experience. <laughs> Yeah, we would tell him, you know, he's living in the mountain, in the cave there alone. But we would tell him about Srila Prabhupada, that this is our guru. He went to the, the Western world and he preached Krishna consciousness everywhere. And he got every, all the people chanting Hare Krishna mantra. And he's writing these books and we're distributing them all over the world. He understood, wow, very great. You know, he's just sitting in a little cave in the mountain there, nobody there, around just some fields and so on. So he understood, oh, this man is much greater than me. He could go to the West and he preached and he made devotees. So Prahlad Maharaj also, he has that desire to see others delivered. He doesn't want to just be delivered himself, they'd have no meaning. You go back to Godhead alone, what's the good of that? What, what about, you didn't bring anybody? You gotta bring some people with us, right? We're gonna go back to Godhead, you can't just go on your own. What have you been doing there all the time? What have you been doing there, you know? There gotta be some result. Prabhupada, Tamal Krishna Maharaj told me how Prabhupada would question him. 
How many books have you distributed? How many properties have you acquired? How many devotees have you made? Prabhupada wanted to see results, you know. <laughs> so, uh, you know, that, that was Prabhupada's mood, you know. He, he pushed people like Tamal Krishna Maharaj to do these things, you know. Tamal Krishna Maharaj was here in India and he was the GBC, but then he went back to America and Prabhupada was thinking to bring him back to India because he needed him to help manage India. But then Tamal Krishna Maharaj came with all the new devotees he'd made. And when he saw all the devotees he'd made, then he said, oh, okay, okay, then you can stay here. He let him stay on in him and do Radha Damodar. <laughs> so like that, Prahlad Maharaj also wants to deliver the fallen souls. He wants to, our, and Prabhupada said, our Krishna consciousness movement has that same mood as Prahlad Maharaj. He said, we don't sit down in the jungle or in the forest just for our own meditation. He said, our job is to go, to go everywhere and preach Krishna consciousness in the cities, all these hellish cities where people are living. We have to go there, like Hong Kong. Janani Vas came to Hong Kong. He saw Hong Kong, right? Our big rooms, right? <laughs> Remember how small everything is? How low the ceilings are? How narrow the corridors are? Everybody packed in little spaces. This Hong Kong, I call it, I call it Hell Kong. <laughs> One, you know, and everybody, you look out the window, you look into the next person's apartment and the next building, you know. <laughs> Everything is so close, so packed together. So, but our job is to go be there and preach there. There's a lot of souls to be saved there. A lot of preaching to be done. A lot of books to be distributed. We have to give the holy name to these people. And so it, it, it's, it's not easy, but it's got to be done. We've got to have that mood. We've got to reach out to people. We talk about outreach, you know, going, reaching out to people, going to people. And there's a lot of people who still need to get the holy name. They never heard the holy name. They never heard the glories of Krishna. We've got to reach out to them and try to deliver them. We've got to give them the taste of prasadam. We've got to somehow try to help them out, get out from this material world. Oh. Yes. No, tapasya is very important. Tapasya, we say austerities. In uh, Srimad Bhagavatam, Prabhupada describes how austerity, tapa, is one of the pillars of religion. One of the four pillars. Satyam socham daya tapa. Satyam truthfulness, socham cleanliness, daya mercy, tapa austerity. So austerity is destroyed by pride. The demonic people are very proud. They don't want to do austerity. They don't want to give up their sense gratification. And, but of course we see demons like Haranya Kashipu, he did great austerity. But the purpose of his austerity was to make, become more proud and they become more arrogant. So much to the point that he said, I am God. Right? Bhag Haranya, Bhagavan Haranya Kashipu. Right? He's thinking, not Bhagavan Nasringa, but Bhagavan Haranya Kashipu. He, he wants to challenge God, to challenge the Supreme. He doesn't want to surrender. So there is tapasya in the modes. There's tapasya in goodness, and in passion and in ignorance. 
So you have to understand the proper use of austerity. Not that everybody who's doing austerity is actually devotee or pious, but many demons did great tapasya to get their power. Yeah. So people use the tapasya to get power, to enjoy, and devotee does tapasya to serve. Our austerity to go out preaching, to travel and preach and to do our austerity to come here and do sadhana bhakti, our austerity to give Krishna consciousness to people. We do our austerity to purify ourselves, to please Krishna. By tapasya, then we can experience real pleasure. Rishav Dev said, uh, the famous Nayam Deho Dehab Jam Nirilokhe Kushtam Kamarna Hatevid Bujam Ye Tejo Divyam Putrakayena Satvam Shura Yadyas Mad Brahma Shokyam Twanantam. Rishav Dev is telling his sons, sense gratification is there for the animals which eat stool. Do some tapasya, purify yourself, then you will experience real pleasure. A real pleasure means real pleasure, the higher taste, the param dristva, the pleasure of the soul, not just the pleasure of the skin, the pleasure of the genital, the pleasure of the tongue. That the real pleasure is in the soul. We want to awaken our spiritual consciousness. Yes, you can try your best to execute the order of the spiritual master. But you may be fortunate, just like Lord Chaitanya would walk. After he walked, people would take the dust where he walked. Right? And they'd make big holes in the ground <laughs> from where he walked. Because Lord Chaitanya wouldn't let people just come and touch his feet. Especially women. Women cannot just come and touch the feet like that. No sannyasi, no guru will just let the women come and touch their feet. But you can take the dust after they've walked. That can be done. But the more effective way is to follow all the orders, take up the service, the mission of the spiritual master. That will be more effective. Sometimes people would come to Prabhupada and want to touch Prabhupada's feet. Prabhupada would say, better you bring me my slippers. In other words, you do some service, will be more practical. Just like you come and take the dust, if you again then go do nonsense activities, then what is the good? Just like people come and bathe in Ganga and then go back and do nonsense activities. So if you just take the dust from the feet and then you do nonsense, you don't do proper service, it's not good. So better you do the, engage in the service of the spiritual teacher. That will be more powerful. I'll just repeat the question for the people online. The question was about 
a devotee may be in the situation that their family members are not devotees and they do all kinds of sinful activities. So, what Prahlad could deliver his father, will, will we be able to deliver any of our family members? Well, Prahlad delivered his family members because he was such a great devotee. So if you become a great devotee, then you can also deliver your family members. It's possible by the blessings of Lord Krishna, the blessings of the Holy Name and the blessings of Prabhupada and Prabhupada's movement. It's possible. You can also become a, a good, a pure devotee. Certainly, your family members can get some benefit just simply by your association. Because you're a devotee, so sometimes they may smell the flowers which you offer to Krishna, the incense you burn as you offer incense to Krishna in the home, they may smell the incense. Sometimes you will also give them prasadam. Sometimes they will also hear the holy name, the chanting. And just by being close to a devotee, they're greatly benefited. So they may not get delivered to the extent that Prahlad Maharaj's father was, but still they can get great benefit, they can be greatly helped on the path. So that in the next birth, they may be more fortunate. Remember Prahlad Maharaj, his father had to take birth two more times before he went back to Vaikuntha. Hranyakashipu was his first birth. But he had two more births before he would go be delivered. And so your family members can be greatly helped. So you try to be a good devotee. Just try to fix yourself in Krishna consciousness and try to show a nice example and give them a good impression about Krishna consciousness. Don't criticize them. Don't always be telling your family members you're going to go to hell. <laughs> that, won't, that won't help them. That won't be good preaching. Try to be a good example. Okay? Hare Krishna. Srimad Bhagavatam ki jai. Srila Prabhupada ki. Gaur Primanandi Haribo. Go back to Vrinda Ki Jai. They like to increase the number of the...